Hi, I'm Nina Turner, and I want to thank Peace Action Massachusetts so much for the great work that they're doing to shed light along with some other organizations and millions of people in this country on why the military industrial complex is not good for any of us. You know, not only are we citizens of this great nation, we are citizens of a great world. And as such, in the words of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., what affects one directly affects us all indirectly. There is no truer example of that than militarization and the cost of it. And you know what, sisters and brothers, it really doesn't matter who's in the White House at the time for the most part. Under both Republican and Democrat presidents, that complex continues to get more and more, more and more money. That line item continues to grow for some reason. Yet when it comes to providing health care for folks in this country, the powerful elites tend to say, we don't have the money. When it comes to looking at and making sure, ensuring that everyone in this nation has clean water, clean food, and clean air, all of a sudden, we can't afford it. When it comes to ensuring that our children, that their success in education is not based on their zip code or what their parents have or do not have, like making that a real major focus with our tax dollars, you know what the folks in power say time and time again, we can't afford that. But when it comes to increasing the military industrial complex, even right now under this current administration, there is a proposal presented to Congress to increase the budget for the military industrial complex, but for everything else, whether it's healthcare or education, we often say we don't have it, that we can't afford it. Well, you know what, what we cannot afford? We cannot afford business as usual when it comes to the war machine, which does not, absolutely does not keep any of us safe. As a matter of fact, sisters and brothers, it actually makes us less safe. And that is why organizations like Peace Action really do matter. There is a real synergistic connection between forever wars and our livelihoods. Not caring about what happens to our sisters and brothers in other countries absolutely makes us less safe, not safe. And so we have to continue to understand the role that we play and what we allow to be done in our name. I mean, the discretionary budget, for example, and it's growing, but the last number was at $1.3 trillion, give or take. The cost, what we spend from that discretionary budget, you might ask, well, what do we spend? Nina Turner, I'm glad you asked. Over 50% of it goes towards the military industrial complex. Now notice I said discretionary budget, meaning yes, we have discretion. We can make a decision about where that money goes. But instead of investing our tax dollars, yes, our tax dollars, because sometimes politicians act as though it's their money, don't they? And they stand up and pontificate about what cannot be done with the money, our money. They make it seem as though it's their money and that somehow they're doing us a favor. But I digress. Let me get back to the discretionary budget. Over 50% of that budget goes towards the military industrial complex where we could take that same money and invest it towards Medicare for all. How about that? We could take that same money and invest it towards ensuring that we have a pre-K to college or vocational trade education for people in this nation. Isn't that a better way to spend the discretionary budget? Wouldn't that be a better way to spend our money? I think so. You know, Mahatma Gandhi once said, that we must be the change that we want to see in the world. Keyword, we. Another keyword, 
must. Hell, the whole quote is key. We must be the change we want to see in the world. So that means that we cannot sit idly by. We cannot sit on the sidelines. We cannot allow this runaway spending on the military industrial complex to overshadow, to overtake all the other wonderful things that we could do on the domestic side of the ledger to enhance the lives of the people in this country. And then there is a connection between the enhancement of our lives right here at home and the enhancement of the lives of other people all over the world who have to live in war zones. We can't condone that. We can't endorse that. We cannot allow that to happen in our name. And guess what? For those who propagate a the notion that somehow we will be less safe, let me tell you this, sisters. Where we spend more money than other industrialized nations combined on the military industrial complex. So take it from me. And if you don't want to take it from me, look up the data. We have enough money already assigned to keeping us safe. But safety is not just about who carries the biggest stick who, or who has the bigger, biggest nuclear weapon. If there were ever to be a World War III, none of us would survive. None of us. Because of the type of war-making capabilities that we have in the United States of America right now and other world powers, we would not survive. So why would we continue to invest in war making when we can invest in making peace? When we can invest in justice, justice for ourselves and justice for our sisters and brothers in other parts of the world. That is true safety. So we need a paradigm shift on how we think about what makes us safe. Now, of course, if some dictator or neo-fascist wants to come at this country, then we are more than ready and more than capable. But the amount of money and the amount of time and attention that we give to continuously building up an arsenal that does not help us. And you know what? It doesn't even help our veterans for the most part. Think about that. We have homeless veterans. We have veterans who are not getting the care and the attention that they need. So it would be one thing if the overwhelming majority of this money was going to support our enlisted women and men and to shore up our service women and men who are now retired, but that is not the case. This money goes to make corporations who benefit from getting everybody ginned up over the, the enemy that's lurking. Well, you know what that enemy is right now? It is the fact that we concentrate too much on war making instead of making peace. And guess what? Relationships, peace building, justice building, it requires work. It requires relationship. It just doesn't happen by accident. It has to happen on purpose. So I am hoping that you will join Peace Action and join me and other elected officials from all levels of government, but particularly in that Congress, people who really do believe and understand that true safety, that real deep-seated safety comes from not making war, baby. It comes from making peace. And I do agree with the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when he, in his, a speech that he gave in 1967, he laid out, he talked about the triple evils, the threat of militarism, materialism, and racism. Those were threats in the late 1960s, and unfortunately, in the 21st century, they still remain some of the biggest threats to not only our survival, but to how we get to thrive. So we, those things were done on purpose. The money that is being spent in our name, the endless wars that are happening in our name are being done on purpose. But there's a silver lining. These things are being done on purpose and they can be undone on purpose. So please join Peace Action in this 
epic opportunity to help to make peace and to continue to walk, no, not walk, run towards justice. Justice is not a destination. It is absolutely a journey. And it is our responsibility, every single generation, to advance that. We can do it. Peace Action needs you. This nation needs you to get involved in this. Our world needs you. There are sisters and brothers in other countries, and they hear bombs going off almost all the time. There are sisters and brothers all over the world, and they don't have what we have in this country. We have to care about what they have to endure at night, just as we care about ourselves. Because you know what? They could be us, and we could be them. What happens over there happens over here. And the United States should be a beacon. They should be a leader in having a global paradigm shift. Wouldn't that be beautiful? The awesome president Nelson Mandela once said, it always seems impossible until it is done. So while we have the naysayers about how it cannot be done, we can prove them wrong and we can lock arms in this country and then lock arms with our sisters and brothers in other parts of the world to say that it can be done and that what is done in our name, it absolutely matters. We cannot afford to continue this course. No, we cannot. Only all that we love is on the line. That's it. Nothing, nothing, nothing too important. Just all that we love. And we have an obligation to ourselves and we have obligations to generations that are not even born yet to continue to push. Imagine the type of money that can go into COVID relief or health care or just to sure up human rights. We can do it. Discretionary budget. More on the human capital side and less on the war making side. Let's do this together. Again, Peace Action, thank you so much for all that you do. And I am so excited to be, to be on this justice journey with all of you.